Just as God designed the incredible wonders of the universe, he also designed the perfect way for us to eat for health and for a long and fruitful life. This series of teachings on eating God's way for health and weight loss was inspired by God showing me different aspects of his eating plan for us. Each post will be on a different topic, but at the end, you will get an opportunity to hear how I learned God's eating plan. It shares what inspired me and what I learned about this topic. If you have not heard this, please take the time to listen. July 26, 2022 Are we meant to eat wheat and grains? When I was trying desperately to lose weight, plus having digestive issues, my husband heard in the night hours, it's the bread. How could this be if I had bread that healthy, whole grain bread were good for you? But what does God say about bread? In the beginning, in Genesis 2, God made fruit trees of all kinds for food. After human disobedience, God told people they would have to toil and compete with thorns and thistles to till the ground for food. In Genesis 3, God told people they would eat bread until they died. I asked myself if this meant bread could be the cause of death. So I cut back on bread and ate more fruit, but still no weight loss or digestive healing occurred. Finally, I heard this still small voice say, you can't have any bread. I obeyed, but thinking it was only gluten intolerance, I switched to gluten-free bread. Digestion got better, but still no weight loss. I began looking around me at people's bodies. What I saw was obesity, particularly protruding abdomens. Actually, many men had little fat on their bodies except for very large bellies. You might say these are beer bellies. Many of these men didn't drink beer. However, beer is partially weak, so it could be a factor. Because of the observing protruding abdomens, I was attracted to a book called Wheat Belly by William Davis, M.D. In the book, Davis's basic premise is that people were made to be hunter-gatherers. The cause for over 99% of their existence on this planet, they ate meat from animals, plus fruit, nuts, and plants growing on the land. It was not until ancient Egypt started growing wheat for human consumption that problems with tooth decay tooth misalignment and bone deterioration were discovered by archaeologists' findings from that period. Before that period, bones and teeth were found to look normal. In the book Protein Power by Michael and Mary Eads, modern examination of Egyptian mummified remains speak of not only rotten teeth, but hardening of the arteries, elevated blood pressure, and dying in their 30s with heart attacks. They also showed Egyptian skeletal remains showing signs of malnutrition and stunted growth compared to the tall height of hunter-gatherers. The East claim that as our consumption of grains increased, our health declined. A diet heavy in carbohydrates also sends insulin levels soaring and the body interprets this as a need to store calories. Dr. Davis states that grazing animals are made to eat grains and grasses and have completely different digestive systems than humans. Cows, sheep, and deer digest grains and grasses well. People's digestive systems are not designed to digest grains, especially wheat. Dr. Davis himself was overweight, though he thought he was eating healthy and exercising regularly. He noticed in himself sluggishness, poor concentration, and fatigue 
especially after a breakfast made from wheat, such as pancakes, biscuits, cereals, or waffles. As an experiment, he gave up all wheat. Shortly, he noticed significant weight loss, regained energy, and alertness. Next, he tried no-wheat diets with his patients, 400 of them, with the result of across-the-board weight loss and recovery from numerous health problems and diseases. Although Dr. Davis concentrates on wheat as the main culprit, he advocates against other grains as well as they cause similar problems. This includes oats, rye, barley, corn, and rice. Therefore, my gluten-free bread do not make for weight loss or great health. Next, God led me to a different nail technician. She looked all of 25 years old. When asked, she told me she was 40 with two teenage boys. I was impressed with her thin body and flat abdomen, plus her beautiful skin without wrinkles. Asking about her diet, it it included not wheat or wheat flour, but only rice. Small amounts of meat plus vegetables and yogurt were also included. Did she like sweets? Not at all, not even chocolate. She described small portions for each meal. I came away marveling at the Vietnamese diet and have now sampled it at a restaurant. While noticing others' wheat bellies, I denied that I had one myself, as I could hide it behind uh, loose-fitting blouses. The truth was I had never regained a flat stomach after my second pregnancy, despite months of sit-ups. Finally, I faced up to the truth. I had a wheat belly too. Excess visceral fat can surround your organs, which is different from under the skin fat, according to Dr. Davis. When the organs behind the abdominal muscles are covered with too much visceral fat, the abdomen pushes out. This discovery came the day after praying God would reveal the cause of my protruding abdomen. Even after I lost 20 pounds required for surgery, to achieve that large weight loss required counting every calorie that went into my mouth. There had to be a better way. After surgery, I was not allowed to eat bread for eight weeks. Consequently, seven more pounds came off easily. After eight weeks, I resumed eating gluten-free bread, so I didn't lose any more, although I maintained what I had lost. However, I still had a protruding belly, so I await with anticipation the pounds coming off with proper diet and better health also. As you can ascertain from my story, God was instrumental in leading me to truths about wheat and other grains. I don't eat them now except for an occasional small helping of rice. Learn from my experience and from what God has revealed to me. He has taken me further ahead on my journey to weight loss and good health. Getting rid of that excess visceral fat will allow my organs to function properly and return my abdomen to a flatter state. However, grains are not the only deterrent to health and weight loss. A major additional food causing problems is sugar in all its forms. Sugar will be addressed in my next post on Eating God's Way. Won't you join me? in boycotting most grains, especially wheat. While I was receiving prophetic words from God that I have put on a YouTube site called Prophetic Words for the Hearts of God's People, suddenly I received a prophecy about people are killing themselves with what and how they eat. This prophecy did not seem to fit with the others I had received, So I asked God what to do with it. The words I heard were this. Start another YouTube series called Eating God's Way for Healing and Weight Loss. 
interesting because I had been delving into how I could lose weight and eat healthy. Therefore, I thought the prophecy might be for me alone. But no, the still small voice assured me it was for multitudes of his people. He said they are eating the wrong things plus too much of them and need to know when and how much to eat. God said to my spirit, do it, as my people are literally making themselves sick with their food choices and excess weight. Thus, I will share what God has shown me and what I have learned from my research. It will not be technical, as, as I am not a scientist nor a doctor. When I asked him, God's Spirit told me I, to use the same venue as I'm using on another YouTube site. My own story of many body malfunctions and diseases God has shown were caused by what I ate. How much and how often will be shared here also. Several unnecessary surgeries could have been avoided had I known God's way to eat. Learn, enjoy, and be blessed. If you are spiritually hungry, you might want to check out my other YouTube site called Prophetic Words for the Hearts of God's People by Patricia Williams.